we're ready to add some links to our HTML. So coming back to our Figma designs here, we've got links all over the place. We've got the top nav, we've got three links up there. Uh, we've got the make your menu, that's a button, but it's really a link in disguise. And if we look at these pages here, we've got links at the top as well. So let's go ahead. And remember, we've already got our two pages here. We've got the landing page for quick menu, and then we've also got our sign up page as well. So we wanna make sure we have some connection between those two different pages. So let's start with our syntax again, like always, and then we will dive into the linking. So first up, we're gonna go ahead and we're on index.html and we're gonna go ahead and add a link. So we're gonna start with our bracket. We'll do an A and then we will do a uh, other bracket and that will close the tag for us. So we've got an open and closing tag in here. Now inside of the A tag, we wanna include the link content. So what we mean by that is what do we want it to say uh, inside the link, like what is the text that the user should be seeing. So in our case, that'll be sign up. So why don't we go ahead and we'll say sign up. Great, and if we go ahead, we refresh the page, we'll see sign up at the top. So now the question is, well, okay, we have this, but it's not clickable, it's just the content. How do we actually add that interactivity? And you might be looking at the image tag and saying, hmm, those attributes look sort of familiar. That's sort of meta information for this element. Why don't we go ahead and do that? So we can come in here, we can say href, and that is equal uh, to two empty quotes. And this is how we define the link or the path that this link should go to. So in our case, we wanted to be going to that sign up page. So we just write the name of the file using sign up dash sign dash up dot html now we give this a refresh and look what happened we've got some interactivity now so we get our underline which is sort of the universal symbol for a link uh, and then it also went blue so that's also some indicator that this is something interactive and we click on this we go to the sign up page and so this is how we add links to our page and if you notice we click back we're in the browser history we we can go back and forth between the various uh, pages in our design here. So we've got a link to sign up. What if we want to go home? Well, why don't we go ahead and we'll add a link here and we'll just do it again. This is a good practice. Fingers on keyboard. We'll say href is equal to index.html and we can close this and we can say home. We could probably replace this with the logo in a little bit, but now give us a refresh. We got two links. We got home, which doesn't really go anywhere here, but if we go to sign up, we can see this. So if we hit back, we've got these two links here. Refresh, it's all working together. Now you're noticing this and you're probably saying, hmm, okay, this is great, it's on the landing page, but now like, well, how do I get it over here? I wanna go back home. Can I, can I add it over here? And the answer is yes, we're just gonna to need to copy and paste it. So we're gonna command C here and we'll bring this over right on top here of the body section. Give this a refresh and now we have home and sign up. So we can bounce between all of our pages here. So the next logical question that I'm sure you're asking is like, okay, that's awesome, cool, but do I really have to copy and paste all of my links all over the place? And the answer, if you're working with just vanilla straight HTML is yes, you do. Every single page that has different content on it or shared content, it just needs to be duplicated and shared um, in those different contexts. Now, when you get a little bit more into advanced website building and web development, there are ways to use templates or components like we do in Figma to sort of encapsulate shared functionality like navigation. And then you can share that through all of your different pages. But that is a step beyond raw HTML. In vanilla HTML, you kind of have to copy and paste everything everywhere. And so if you think about big websites, think of like CNN.com or BBC.com, these big news sites that have millions and millions of articles, somewhere, everyone, every single one of those articles is an HTML page. So at the end of the day, they're compiling out like this, but they have templates on the back end that they pre-film with just the content and then they keep everything that's supposed to be the same consistent for all of those pages. So this is starting to get a little bit more into the advanced portion of web development, but you can see we plant these seeds here. We need to have this way to link between the different pages. So this is relative linking like we did before. Remember with our image tag, we had the link out to the unsplash image. That was an absolute link. Can we do the same thing with our, our link elements? And the answer is yes, absolutely. What if we wanted to go to Google? We can do that. We'll go ahead and we'll say a href and we'll say https 
uh, colon slash slash google.com. And we'll close this and we'll say Google. So we give this a refresh over here and now we've added a link to Google. And if we click on that, we get taken straight to google.com. So remember back at the very beginning, we were talking about HTML being hypertext markup language. Markup language is really what we've been focused on, describing the information that gets added to the page here. But we are now entering the world of hypertext and it's all about these links. So these links are the connection between pages within a, a website and then multiple different websites. We are linking and building a collection of all of this information together here. And that is what makes links so, so powerful.